Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. This is part 31 of Tafsir al-Sa'di. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. Inna fi khalqi s-samawati wal-ardi wa akhtilafi al-layli wa al-nahari wal-fulki al-lati tajri fi al-bahri bima yanfa'u al-nas. وَالْفُلْكِ الَّتِي تَجْرِي فِي الْبَحْرِ بِمَا يَنْفَعُ النَّاسَ وَمَا أَنْزَلَ اللَّهُ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ مِنْ مَاءٍ فَأَحْيَا بِهِ الْأَرْضَ بَعْدَ مَوْتِهَا وَبَثَّ فِيهَا وَبَثَّ فِيهَا مِنْ كُلِّ دَابَّةٍ وَتَصْرِيفِ الرِّيَاحِ وَالسَّحَابِ وَتَصْرِيفِ الرِّيَاحِ وَالسَّحَابِ الْمُسَخَّرِ بَيْنَ السَّمَاءِ وَالْأَرْضِ لَآيَاتٍ Verily, in the creation of the heavens and the earth, in the alternation of the night and the day, in the sailing of the ships through the ocean for the benefit of humankind, in the rain which Allah sends down from the skies, and the life which He gives thereby to the earth that is dead, in the beasts of all kinds that he scatters throughout the earth in the changing of the winds and clouds that run their appointed courses between heaven and earth. Here are indeed signs for people of understanding. Here Allah tells us that in these created beings there are great signs, that is, evidence of the oneness and divinity of the creator and of his great power mercy and all other attributes but they are signs for the qawmi yaqilun for people of understanding that is for those who use their minds for the purpose for which they were created so according to the level of rational thinking with which allah has blessed his slave that person will be able to benefit from these signs and recognize them by way of his reasoning, thinking, and pondering. In the creation of the heavens and earth, in the creation of the heavens, with their great height and breadth, their precision and perfection, and what Allah has placed in them of the sun, moon, and stars, and how they mark time in the ordering of people's affairs and in the creation of the earth as a place where they could settle and abide, benefiting from everything in it and pondering it. There is an indication of Allah's unique powers of creation and control. This highlights his immense power by which he created it, his wisdom by means of which he perfected it, designed it beautifully and regulated it and his knowledge and mercy by means of which he placed what he placed on earth of things that are beneficial to humankind, serving their interests and meeting their needs. Serving their interests and meeting their needs. In all of that, there is the most eloquent proof of his perfection and that he alone is deserving of worship because he alone creates and controls and takes care of his slaves' affairs in the alternation of the night and the day, which constantly follow one another. When one departs, it is succeeded by the other. Their alternation, this alternation of night and day results in alternation between heat and cold and moderate temperatures and between long and short days and days of moderate length. All of that in turn leads to the seasons the order of which brings great benefits to the sons of Adam and their livestock and to everything that is on the face of the earth, of trees and plants. All of that is in accordance with the system and plan in such a way that dazzles the most brilliant of minds. This is indicative of Allah's great might, knowledge, wisdom, vast mercy, all-encompassing kindness and full control which and full control which is his alone. His might is the might of sovereignty and power, which dictates that he alone should be venerated and worshipped. And he is the only one who should be loved, the only one whom we should fear and in whom we should put our hope 
and strive to attain his love and pleasure. In the sailing of the ships through the ocean for the benefit of humankind. This refers to ships, boats, and other vessels that Allah inspired his slaves to make and created for them the mental and physical means of making them. Then he subjugated this vast ocean for them and the winds by means of which they move, carrying passengers, wealth, and goods that are essential conveniences for people in such a way that serves their interests. Who is it that inspired them to make them, enabled them to do so, and created for them the means of making them? Who is it that subjugated the sea for them so that they travel in it by his leave and his subjugation of the winds? Who is it that created fire and metal for vehicles and vessels on land and sea? which helps to carry them and what they contain of wealth. Did these things happen randomly? Or are they all made by this weak and vulnerable creature who emerged from, who emerged from his mother's womb with no knowledge or ability? Then Allah created that ability in him and taught him what he wanted to teach him. Or was all of that subjugated to them by one Lord? most wise and all knowing for whom nothing is beyond for for whom nothing is beyond him and nothing is too difficult for him indeed all things are subject to his lordship greatness and might the best that can be said about this weak human being is that allah has made him part of the means by which these great things came into existence this indicates that allah is merciful and cares for his creation all of this dictates that all love, fear, hope, obedience, humility, and veneration should be for Allah alone. وَمَا أَنزَلَ اللَّهُ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ مِنْ مَا And in the rain which Allah sends down from the skies, and it comes down from the clouds, فَأَحْيَا بِهِ الْأَرْضَ بَعْدَ مَوْتِهَا And the life which He gives thereby to an earth that is dead, and it brings forth all kinds of provisions and all types of plants without which humans and animals cannot live. Is this not, is this not indicative of the might of the one who sent it down and brought forth by means of it, and brought forth by means of it what he brought forth? Is it not indicative of his mercy and kindness to his slaves and his taking care of their interests? Is it not indicative of the greatness of their need for him in all aspects, does that not dictate that he alone should be their God, whom they worship? Is that not evidence for the resurrection of the dead and their requital for their deeds? In the beats of all kind that he scatters throughout the earth. That is, that he spreads throughout all regions of the earth or of different kinds of animals. This is indicative of his might, greatness, oneness, and sovereignty. He subjugated them for humankind so that they benefit from them in all ways. They eat the flesh of some of them and drink their milk. They ride some of them and use others for various tasks and to guard them. They learn lessons from some of them as he has scattered beasts of all kinds throughout the earth. He also takes care of their provisions. He also takes care of their provision. There is no living creature on, on earth, but its provision is due from Allah. There is, no living creature or, there is no living creature on this earth, but its provision is due from Allah. He knows where it lives and where it dies. In the changing of the winds and clouds, hot and cold, north and south, east and west, and everything in between. Sometimes the wind generates clouds. Sometimes it joins the clouds together into a heap. Sometimes it fecundates the clouds. Sometimes it causes rain. Sometimes it breaks up the clouds, removing their harm. Sometimes it brings mercy and sometimes it brings punishment. Who is it that controls the winds in this way and creates in them 
benefits for people which they cannot do without? Who is it that generates them so that they become a means of survival for all kinds of animals and all living things, such as trees, grains, and plants? It can be none other than the Almighty, the most wise, the most merciful, who is kind to his slaves and is deserving of all humility, submission, love, devotion, and worship. In the subjugation of the clouds between heaven and earth, in the subjugation of the clouds between heaven and earth, which despite their lightness and fragility carry a great deal of water, which Allah drives wherever he wills, and it brings life to the land and the people, irrigating the hills and valleys, is an indication of his great power, kindness, and mercy. He sends the rain down to humankind at the time of need, but if they will be harmed by its abundance, he, withhold, he withholds it from them. He sends it down as a mercy and kindness and directs it in accordance with his care and compassion. Is it not reprehensible on the part of his slaves that they should enjoy? Is it not reprehensible on the parts of his slave? Is it not reprehensible on the part of his slaves that they should enjoy this provision and live by his kindness, yet they use it for sinful purposes that incur his wrath? Is this not indicative of his forbearance, patience, tolerance, and of the extent of his kindness? Praise be to him at all times and in all circumstances. The point is that the more a man of understanding thinks of Allah's creation, and thoroughly examines the wonders thereof, the more he thinks of the amazing design and what he has created in it of things that are indicative of his kindness and wisdom, he will realize that it was created for the truth and by the truth. It is an open book of signs and evidence that point to what Allah has told us about himself and his oneness and what the messengers have told us about the last day and that all people are subjugated to his control and have no control over themselves and no power to resist. Thus, you should realize that all of creation in heaven and on earth are in desperate need of him. He is the one who is independent of means in and of himself and has no need of any of his creation. There is no God but Allah and there is no Lord besides him. والحمد لله رب العالمين